Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, Dad, now you can't complain. Hair recently quaffed. And Dad, if you do need an opportunity not to look at my hair because it is disheveled, disorganized, uh, kind of frumpy maybe, just look at the screen with your right eye. That'll magically disappear. Uh, why you're blind in your right eye. Uh, and great news, we're actually going to discuss vision issues on this episode. We're going to discuss a term called gaze palsy. What is gaze palsy? Gaze palsy is a term used to discuss and describe a, symmet a symmetrical limitation of the movement of the eyes in the same direction. So that doesn't mean you've got one eye facing straight to the front and another eye kind of gaggling off in this direction, right? Uh, part, part and parcel of doing an assessment for a stroke is, and this is included in the National Institute uh, stroke scale, uh, you know, the European stroke scale and the Scandinavian stroke scale. So three of the major criterion, you know, diagnostic um, tools for measuring stroke is gaze palsy. <clears throat> and then that, and that is why we say if you notice su sudden onset vision issues or some form of visual disturbance, um, that is an excellent indicator you may be going through a neurovascular event. You're you're having a fucking stroke, right? So let's just discuss gaze palsy, both horizontal and vertical. The great news is, the vast majority of gaze palsy will dissipate on its own in days or weeks. Now I realize there's some guy out in a tum a Tumwa, Iowa, is about to tell me, well, it lasted months. Again, one of the fun facts of stroke and stroke recovery, it's it's all in the air. I'll be quite honest. It's it's a, it's a bit of vagaries and uncertainties because you're getting highly educated, highly expensive guesses, right? Don't don't get me wrong; these come from medical practitioners, but in some cases they just use a slide rule that what they know to be true from their their, their studies, the textbooks, their own personal history with stroke, the the latest seminars they've been to. <clears throat> and on that note. I'm not a medical practitioner in any way. I'm not a doctor. This is merely information. If you have either been diagnosed post-stroke or you suspect post-stroke that this is something you are having to deal with, my only advice is either have your neurologist or your general practitioner or your, or your eye doctor refer you to a neuro-ophthalmologist, a doctor that is an eye doctor that deals specifically with neurological disruptions in vision. Uh, I don't know what that'll take in your area, but definitely that's something you might want to take a look at. So, we know what gaze palsy is, right? And we know, generally speaking, it'll it'll subside on its own. This will just magically go away. <clears throat> However, I can't tell you when. What I can tell you is this. Gaze palsy... Right, will create some difficulties because either your eyes are locked in one position, right, or when you do the eye work, right, when they still kiss everyone, follow my finger, right, and you go up and they go down and they go left and they go right. But you notice they move their finger way off into your peripherals, right, both horizontally and vertically. That's because they want to see does the eye stop tracking the finger? So all of a sudden, you're tracking, 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 stop, right? And the eye just stops, right? So that is gaze palsy, where that is one form, where for whatever reason, there's a neuromuscular disruption, where the eye just, they can't move. So either you have a dead spot where you're unable to look left or right, right? Or up and down, one or the other. Now, for the obscure reference of the day, we're going to put in some 3D effects. Let's see who gets that reference. You might want to call Count Floyd. That's the only guess I'm going to give you. <clears throat> and maybe Dr. Tun. That's, again, it's two guesses. That'll help. So, for those of you who get that obscure reference, great. So that being said, so gaze palsy. So when they do the neurological test, 
Right? And they determine you now have basically a dead spot where you're able to look, right? It's now going to create some issues. Um, it's going to create some mobility issues, right? Could create some balance issues, right? And could create some neglect issues. And we're going to quickly discuss all of that. Um, so first off, just let me say that if it creates a balance issue or creates a um, movement issue, mobility issue, or creates a uh, safety issue, going to be honest, you may need to consider you now need a spotter out in the world, right? Because think about it, part of your world, you're not able to successfully visualize. So in the case of where your eyes are locked in one position, you now have to turn your head, right? Be able to visualize what you need to look at, be it up, down, left, or right. In a case of you have a spot where the eyes don't want to move to as you track left, right, up, down, again, you're going to have to move your head to be able to visualize that part of the world. So that in and of itself could be disturbing, have a level of disorientation to it, I myself, after my stroke, had difficulty moving my head because um, it hurt um, and maintaining my balance while walking. Now, I wasn't restricted in my visual pathways. However, for me to turn my head, it hurt right? Uh, just to maintain balance and not find the ground. So I appreciate in some respects what that might feel like having not actually had gaze palsy but having had an issue where you know, just turning my head could be difficult. <laughs> so you may, you may end up in instances where the visual disruption because of the gaze palsy is now disrupting uh, your ability to be mobile, right? It's now disrupting things such as your ability uh, for balance. It's now disrupting things such as your ability just to get out and engage the world which could then lead to post-stroke anxiety, uh, post-stroke depression. I could only imagine how frustrating or fatiguing having gaze palsy would be and then just trying to navigate your world because of that. That being said, if you happen to have gaze palsy yourself, I'm going to suggest that you grab your ophthalmologist your neurologist, your general practitioner, and any other professional you need to, get them at the same table all at the same time and have a roundtable discussion about what this might look like for you in your post-stroke world. And is there a recovery timeline? Is this something that is going to naturally just sort of fix itself? Or is this something you're going to need to do? Because there are strategies that they can use to help compensate for some of the difficulties and deficits and dilemmas that are going to help or, or, that are going to present themselves after your stroke. So having gauge palsy is not necessarily a forever thing, but during the time it is a limitation you're going through, in order to help you breach the obstacle, they're going to give you strategies to help get around it. On that note, because I can't really say much more about gaze palsy because I haven't really experienced it myself, this is just some general information to help those that have it. I'll include the links below in the description of all the research I've done about it, so this might help you. And then at that point, if you happen to see uh, either con content you've been enjoying, please leave a comment down below, or you can email directly email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. If you happen to know someone that's going through uh, the recovery of a stroke or supporting someone going through the recovery of a stroke, please point the channel out to them. Like, share, subscribe, leave comments. I'm starting to see an uptick in comments, and it's, it's actually quite rewarding, so I'm having a bit more viewer engagement. Again, if there's something you want to see me cover, either leave a comment or fire off an email. And finally, if you happen to either notice in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being rapid onset things such as they appear befuddled or confused, uh, rapid onset vision issues, just like we've discussed here, they might have facial droop, they may have the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. The inability to smile equally effectively or at all. Slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, right? Inability to stand unaided, general body weakness, weakness on one side. Please immediately place them into a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.